and welcome to the very first SVS Sin broadcast. My name is Garrett Lifwise, and this year I'm your show host. So you may remember me from last year with Molly Armstrong. I'm sad to say, but Molly Armstrong is no longer with us. But yes, I am a show host, and that might be kind of weird from last year. We had two anchors, but we're getting that out of here, and we're getting just me, just a show host. We're going to simplify it for you. And this year's SVSN broadcast is going to be a little bit different this year. You may think that it's going to be the same, it's going to be boring, but we studied what you guys like, and we know what you guys liked from last year, and we know what you guys didn't like from last year. So we're taking all that, and we're changing this broadcast and making it into what you like. We're putting a little bit more of a comedic relief into it also. So just hang with us. If you did not like the broadcast that we did last year, watch just two, just two SVSN broadcasts. And if you don't like it this year, we refund all your money back. Full, all of it. All right, so we're gonna start off this year with a great, Great looking face, beautiful person. You all might know him as McNology, Chance McNally, but this year he's um, changing his approach a little bit, just like we're doing with our whole SBS and broadcast unit. And I don't think he's gonna do too much with technology, so we're gonna take our very first SBS and story to Chance McNally. Out to you, Chance. Thank you. We're here at the YMCA talking with Algenet McNally, aka my mom about the new latchkey program going on here at the YMCA. Hi, Hi. Chance. Hi, Mom. Hi, son. <laughs> <laughs> what is the before and after school program? Well, the before and after school program is um, set up for all school, uh, four school districts, and um, which is Western, Eastern, Scioto Valley, and Waverly. So it actually is a 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, program where the kids can be dropped off by a guardian or a parent um, in the morning um, at 6 and catch the bus here um, and then to go to their local schools and then after school then they can be bused back here um, until 6 p.m. Um, and the parents or guardian can pick them up anytime after school um, and before 6 p.m. Okay, cool. Um, how do they get signed up for this program? Well, they, we have a registration form here at the Y that they would need to pick up um, and a medical release form. But they also need to sign up with their local school um, so that they can be put on the proper bus um, that's um, driven here on that daily basis. Okay. Um, so what age groups is this Latchkey program for? The program is set up for um, K through 12. Um, we do have two different class um, groups um, that we break the kids out into um, after school, which would be um, K through third and then fourth through eighth. So um, the kids are pretty much kept in their age groups, but it is set up for K through 12. Okay, cool. Um, so do they get like a stu uh, snack or any food during this program? Um. Well, the program is actually set up. We do have some local vendors um, that have helped donate some food like McDonald's, um, Lloyd's Pizza, Kroger's, and Daylight Donuts um, have helped with the snacks. So we uh, feed them a breakfast and then after school snack. Um, we also do physical activity with them. So jo Joey Koontz is our um, fitness instructor. He does a youth fitness program with the kids. We also have tutoring um, that we can set up and work with the kids on with tutoring. We have swimming. Um, so if any of the kids on specific days that we go swimming um, would like to participate in that, they just need to bring their swimsuit and a towel. Um, and then they can go swimming on those specific dates. But we do have several activities um, and things going on here at the Y um, to help these kids um, that are part of the program. Okay. Um, and lastly, how long will this program last? Is it like yearly or is it half a year or what? Okay, the program actually started on August 17th, which is the first day of Scioto Valley School started, and then it will continue throughout um, the school year. Now, those uh, families that are interested in being a part of it, um, it is uh, $2 a day for non-members, but if they're members, then of course it's free. Um, or if it's um, if they're non-member and they want to pay by the month, then it's $30 a month. Okay. Cool. Uh, this is Chance McNally with SVSN. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Chance. That was a great first SVSN story. Way to break the ice. All right, I just want to say one thing before I say anything. 
Rest in peace to Harambe. Alrighty, so, as you can tell, we're taking SVS in to a whole nother level. We're trying to change it up this year. We're trying to take a new approach. Instead of being a news channel, we're going to be a, a show, a news show, kind of. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna work more with the audience. So if you don't like something about SVS and broadcast this year, let us know, we'll try to change it. We're trying to do a show that will interest you, bring entertainment to you with comedy, but still with news. So um, to take it off to some announcements, or just one announcement right now, since it's our very first broadcast, um, YLA, Youth Leadership Association, was a new program that we did last year. We, um, see how, we seen how it was last year, and I was involved in it, and it is an amazing experience. YLA is where you go to the Ohio State House, and you pretty much mimic what the um, representatives or Senate would do. So it's a pretty cool experience, and if you're interested in that, Miss Cook is the advisor, and if you want to be in it, just hit up Miss Cook, text her, email her, talk to her, send her a letter, whatever you want to do. And the time for our next story. I don't know if you guys noticed yet, but we do have a new class, BOAG, and I think BOAG is a pretty cool class. I mean, they made me some zucchini bread, and it was pretty good, so I give them an A. But to our next story, we have a very, we have a, a new, we have a new, not a, I don't know why I was saying very, we have a new um, field reporter, and his name is Caleb. And Caleb is going to take this story and just run with it. Out to you, Caleb. What is the VOAG class? Um, the VOAG class stands for Vocational Agriculture. And it was started this year in an effort to try to feed into the CTC program that we have now for the county that's Vocational Agriculture as well. Um, and just to be able to offer another elective that's a little more hands-on, something um, to open the students' eyes to job possibilities in the agricultural field that aren't necessarily farming. So we did a little bit of everything. What are, what are your goals for the VOI classes? Um, my goals this year is to try to just give everyone the same introductory type of course. Um, I have 135 students, I believe, now. And so just want to introduce them to the field of agriculture. Um, again, let them uh, experience some things that they are not going to get in the regular classroom. We're doing a lot of hands-on things. Um, we have microbiology labs for our food science unit. Um, we'll be doing some hands-on things and taking a couple field trips for our animal science unit, um, as well as we've taken over the courtyard. And uh, we put in some raised beds there. So in the spring, um, students should be planning to see some things cropping up and do some things with genetics. And then in the last nine weeks, we're going to be doing a lot with resumes, um, job skills, and that type of thing, helping them plan their futures. So that's very nice. What inspired you to become a teacher? Um, well, I always thought I wanted to be a teacher. When I was in high school, I planned on going into education out of high school, and um, my dad was like, no, you don't want to be a teacher. They don't make any money. And so I did, and I went a different route, which was fine. Um, my background is in interior design. It's what my degree is in. And I did that for a few years when we lived um, farther away. Um, but once we came back to Pike County and we had our family here, um, it just kind of something that's always what I've really wanted to do. And so we did the musical program for my, well, a while, and that really made me confirm to the idea that this is what I should be doing with my life. So that's why I'm teaching. Thank you, Ms. Tappetzel. All right. Thank you, Caleb. And I think BOAG is going to be a great class this year. They already made some amazing zucchini bread, which is really good. Okay, so some few announcements to end this very first broadcast of SVSN. The breakfast is free this year. So if you come to school and you're hungry, we have free breakfast now, so go get you some. And one last announcement. This one is kind of big, kind of special. This year, for the second semester, um, students will be getting a Chromebook. And to um, give you a little bit more information, I have a special guest with us today. How are you doing, Mr. Reuter? Here, how are you, buddy? Very good. This, as you know, this is our principal, Mr. Reuter. And so, um, can you explain a little bit about the one-on-one -on -one Chromebook? 
Well, it's going to be 9 through 12, so right now we don't have our junior high involved. Uh, our goal was to get a, a cart to move around for our junior high. Uh, the one-to-one -one initiative is something that started several years ago. We've, we've looked at it for several years. I want to say five to six to seven years we've wanted to kind of take a look at it. Uh, but the thing about the Chromebooks are they are expensive, and you have to be fiscally responsible. And our superintendent, Dr. Burkett, has done a fantastic job in his 10 years of making sure that we don't overspend and that we are fiscally responsible in our district. And so sometimes you have to wait for the, for the right time for these things to happen. And uh, uh, this, we believe, is the right time. We've got to thank our Board of Education for signing off on that also, buying those. Um, but it's a 9 to 12, and what we did, we went to several conferences, and when you go to these conferences, they have breakout sessions and um, uh, probably five or six different places have the one-to-one -one initiative. And they talked about the positives, they talked about the negatives, they talked about what they learned, uh, they talked about the cost, and they talked about uh, you know, just exactly how they are used in their classroom. That's awesome. So um, obviously laptops have been around for a while, computers, tablets. What made you make this decision this year? What made it final? Well, and sometimes, again, things happen uh, when they're supposed to happen. And what sets the Chromebook apart in our minds, uh, again, talking to all these different schools, is that uh, they are automatically associated with Google. And in the last couple of years, we've taken that step of uh, getting all of our kids uh, onto Google, and they all have passwords, they all have uh, the ability to get on that and do everything through technology. And so we've had a huge push the last five or six years of new technology. And what we're trying to do is, is push that envelope. And this just adds to that part of it. And, and let me tell you, uh, and I, you and I talked earlier, uh, this does not replace good teaching. No. It, it adds to good teaching. If you don't have a good teacher, if you don't have somebody in there doing a great job, which we do, then these Chromebooks are just going to be sitting on the side doing nothing. Uh, but when you add technology, you add new ideas to a classroom with a person that already knows best practices, then you have something that has an opportunity to be special. So that's, that's why we decided to pull the trigger. And, and again, uh, everything just has to be at the right time. And this year was the right time. Yeah. So being a, a student for Ms. Gilbert and Ms. Cook, we use Google Classroom the, uh, almost all the time. And it is an amazing tool. It's great technology to, for learning education. So I can see where he's coming with that. And um, lastly, do you think Python is a technology-friendly school? Well, that's our goal. Uh, we, we want to make sure that we are, again, pushing the envelope. It's one thing that we we want to make it a safe environment for them to fail. We always talk about failing forward. And because, because our teachers are not afraid to fail, then they can come up with great things. And I've been in many classrooms, and they tell me, hey, this is the first time we've done this, and it's going to be a little bit rough. And I say, you know what, that's okay, because it has to be a first time for everything. So we want to make it safe. We want to make them have that. We want to have that trust between administration and teachers and students that everybody's going to do whatever's best for you guys to get you where you need to go. And we believe the technology will add to that. Again, best practices uh, are what drive the school, but technology will be that extra to push us to that next level in our opinion. So we're looking forward to it. All right, so what you're saying is if our technology is used correctly, it will be a good education tool. Absolutely, and, and that's what we're doing right now. We had our first Google training with our teachers. Uh, I got to give a shout out to Mrs. Cook and uh, Miss Gilbert because they took the they took the bull by the horns and they had us all up there with the Google Classroom, Google Drive, and just things that some people already had. So you're not just like giving us all Chromebooks and no. without teachers. No, yeah, you have to build capacity with teachers because you guys are digital natives and we are not. So uh, we're going to be prepared. <clears throat> Yes, they. I want them to be prepared so it doesn't sit on the side, so they can actually use it, and you guys get the most out of it. All right. And one more question: uh, What is it a day, great day to be? It's a great day to be a Python Red Street. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Shooter. And thank you, sir. That is it for first SVS and broadcast. And now I'm going to take it on to the Sports Center team. Thank you. Welcome back to SBSN. I'm your sports anchor, Gabe Berkheimer. I'm your second anchor, Ethan Crabtree. And I'm your third anchor, Baden Fuller. And boys, I just want to say I'm glad to be back. It oh, is it's great to be back. Pleasure to be with you, going. I mean, it's a, the year's off to a beautiful start. We're having wonderful weather. Yeah. Very beautiful weather. Yeah, and you know what else? You know what the bigger thing is? You know what's better than the weather? What's that, Gabe? The only thing I like better than the weather is sports. Yeah. Sports. 
Sports, such a beautiful thing, sports. I tell you what, let's get right off to a, to a very exciting piece we have. Uh, Baden, what's uh, first in the way of our sports news? Well, first of all, we've got the golf team. The golf and, team. Yeah, they're already 2-0 and in league play this year. I knew that we would have a solid team this year. I mean, they're really brilliant, and it's a joy to to go out there and watch them every day. It is. I mean, I, I enjoy in my spare time. I like going to the the our local putt-putt course and, you know, just tapping on the green. Just tapping away. I do the same thing, Gabe. Yeah. All sure. right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's, let's get right to the story now. Um, um, I would like to know a little bit more about this golf team. Yes. Um, our field reporter, Bryce Pearson, has a little more on the story, and he actually got the chance to interview the Splash Brothers, Casey Moore and DJ Graham. So, out to you, Bryce. Thanks guys, I'm here with two of Pikes' golfers, Casey Moore and DJ the Curly Mamba Graham. Now tell me guys, what are your guys' goals for this season? Gold ball, sectional champs, district champs, and state. Wow, um, now you guys have a completely loaded roster. And your sixth man, Denzel Endicott, shot a 38 the other night at Dogwood. Now, is he able to keep that momentum up? Yes, of course, he's Denzel. <laughs> he said he's Denzel. Well, uh, now, you guys have a few matches coming up, uh, you know, JC's, uh, River's Edge, Valley Vista, Valley Vista part of scores. Um, do you guys think you guys can push forward in points? Yes. Push forward. All right. Well, guys, one, one last question. What kind of day is it? Maybe. It's a great day to be a Pike and Red Street. Thank you, Bryce. That was a hole-in-one of an interview. Well. Well, as I say, we move on to our next sport. Uh, Baton, what is our uh, next sport we have out there? Girls soccer. They Girls play, soccer? They played at West Bowl a few days ago. They just came up a little bit short. Well, I tell you what, I bet they played with a lot of heart and a lot of integrity out there on the field. Well, I bet they sure did. So let's find out and send it to Gracie Smith. Out to you, Gracie. Out to you. On Monday, September 5th, the Lady Streaks took on the Northwest Mohawks. The only goal was scored by Emily D. and assisted by Sammy Neal. Cameron Alexander had a total of 13 saves for the night. The final score was 1-1. One one. I'm here on the soccer field with Taryn Smith and Allie Crothers. Allie, how did it feel to score the first ever Piketon Girls Soccer goal? It, it feels great to be a part of history. And Taryn? How's it, what's the difference between playing with just girls and playing with boys and girls? Well, last year we were a little more physical because we could be like, if I, if I go up against a 6'5 boy and I give him a little nudge, they're not going to say much about it because I'm little compared to him. But if I do that to a girl that's my size, I get called and I've been getting called quite a bit this year. I have to learn to keep my arms down, not play as rough, but it's, it's easier for us to play, us that are returning players, it's easier for us to play against girls. Well, that's good. How do you guys? How does your team work on a social level? Uh, we communicate really well. Like if, if I say Allie, cross the ball, she 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 can cross, or we'll be like defense, push up, they'll push up. We're or, really supportive. To yeah, each like other. yeah, yeah. I agree. <clears throat> Thank you, Gracie Smith, for that kicking of a report. Well, let's move on to some uh, some more soccer. Baden, uh, have you heard anything about some more uh, some more soccer updates lately? Yeah, they go and play Northwest, and they played a lot better that game, and resulted in a one and one tie. So oh, that's, that's nice. some good work by those girls out there. That is. That shows that that shows when the uh, the hard work pays off. It's a joy to watch. Them. It is. It really this program, is. Uh, this program is great. To have watch. you made it out to a soccer game this year, Baden? Well, yes, I have. You yeah. have. Me too. Have you, Ethan? Of course. I've been to one game. Uh, Pretty, uh, I've been to the one that resulted in a tie, too. I mean, they're, they're, they're always interesting to watch, no matter the score. Yeah. Uh, Bane, i tell you what, do we have any other uh, girls' sports going on? Well, well, yes we do, Gabe. Girls' volleyball. They were at Paint Valley the other day. They ended up winning that game. So, good work, girls. Yes, good work, And then on the eighth, they're going to be home versus the West Fall Mustangs. Well, I tell you what, we'll have to make sure we get to that, won't we? Of course, we of course. will always be there to support our volleyball team. And then if you want more volleyball action... Mo wait, there's more volleyball? Oh, there's way more volleyball action. More? Yeah, go down on to Beaver, to Eastern High School, this Saturday, the 10th, as the Red Streaks will be in action in the county quad. So All right, you heard him. That should Eastern. be fun to watch. 
Man, I tell you what, we have, we have a lot of sports yeah. going on. I tell you what, it doesn't stop there, though. Because you know what we got coming up next? Football. 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 I tell you what, I'm, I don't personally play football, yeah, I don't but I, I, can't, uh, I can't imagine a sport. I mean, it's just, I mean, you, the football, it has everything. <clears throat> it has the physical ability of those men. Just really, it do, I know what you're it saying. It just really gets to you. It really does. It yeah. really does. It really does. So but I tell you what, let's start with the. How about we start with junior high football? Junior high. Remember my junior high days. Junior I high football. Too. I believe they came up a little bit short in that game. Didn't they, they did. Uh, they played a. The junior high football team took on Adina and came up just a little bit short. How about we send it out to uh, Luke and Eric with junior high football? Out to you. I'm here with Agron Ferguson, junior high football coach. Fergie, how's your team looking this year? Uh, we look pretty good, uh, pretty uh, fast, so we're trying to play on the edge this year. Are you guys big this year? Uh, I got a couple kids with pretty decent size. Um, skill positions are pretty big too, so we should be all right. Um, what's your season opener? Uh, we open up Thursday uh, against Adina at Adina. They any good? I don't know. I haven't got a chance to see them yet. Uh, Adina's usually pretty good, so we're expecting them to be pretty good. Should be a good season. Eric, what do you think? I like football. Thank you, Luke and Eric, for passing that story on back to us. I tell you what, I love hearing about football news. I love just football in general, Gabe. There's just a certain brotherhood. You come together so close as a team, and the bond between 50 to 100 football players is just unbreakable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, football is a great sport to watch. And by the way, you know, there's a football game coming up this Friday. That's very you true. Know, you want to tell them about it? That is. Uh, the ninth, the high school Piketon Red Streaks are going to take on the Valley. What's their mascot, Baden? I believe they're called the Indians. You mean like the. Oh, yeah, the Indians. Yeah, the Indians. Yes, Piketon High School will play the Valley Indians September 9th. The Indians, I hear. They are a very good team, and we have not beat them since 1991. I mean, that should be a good game to watch, because Piketon came off a big old win against Big County. That's very time. true. Uh, I heard uh, that the, uh, the Piketon Red Streaks won 36-26 against the non-conference team, Benton County. Yeah, that was a good win for the Piketon Red Streaks after coming off a loss to those Tigers. That was. That was, was a very hard game, but I tell you what, I think the Red Streaks are going to they're gonna come together, especially after that win, and they're going to play hard. Yeah. All right, well, I tell you what, um, let's move on to our next uh, segment here. Gabe, there's just something that's been running through my mind all day that I just have to get off my chest. Well, well what is it? I mean, you've been, you've been just running around the question. What do you... It's the cross-country meet, Gabe. The cross-country. The Invitational. I tell you what, I mean, if I had to run across the country, I don't know how I could run. I mean, that's thousands of miles to go across the country. Yeah. Well, you don't have to run, but you can go watch September 17th. Oh, where at? Where can I watch the cross-country team? It is the Aaron Reed Invitational. It okay. Southeastern High School. That's correct. So I tell you what, I mean, I don't, I'm not much for running, but I tell you what, I think we should head down there and come out and support our Red Streaks running. Yeah, other cross-country guys, they really work hard too. They oh, do. they do, and I've heard they've had some success this year. We've got to give them the credit too. We do, we do. And I believe they were at last race at Circleville. They did pretty good down there. That's yes. Right it's nice to hear about the Red Streaks are doing great this year. That's very true. And, I mean, you hear not just with, with one sports team, but, I mean, throughout all our sports here, with a lot of athletes having a lot of success. <clears throat> they really put their dedication in there. They really do. I mean, that just shows you the work ethic of the, uh, the Piketon Red Streaks. And I believe that every student athlete here just, you know, they, they put in the work and they get the job done. But we need to thank our coaches especially. We do. Our coaches put in so much time and so much work towards us. If it wasn't up for those coaches, I don't think we'd be that successful in sports. Not at all. That's very true. They really push us to our limits, and sometimes us athletes who don't like it, but it makes us better in the long run. That's some very wise words from our very own sports anchor, B Daddy. Thank you, babe. You, you know what day it is, Brooklyn? What what day is it, be, Dad? It's a great day. It'll be a pike to next street. That's correct. I'm your sports anchor, Gabe Burkheimer. I'm your second anchor, Ethan Crabtree. And I'm your third anchor, Baden, B-Daddy, Fuller.
That's all for this episode. Wait a second. And to all you out there in the valley, keep it classy. Thank you.